Uh, so the new Reap What You Sow update came out, and I spent a little while trying to understand it and get everything going because they removed a few things, added a lot of things. There's a lot new, a lot new, a lot of new mechanics that are now in farming that weren't. And so this will be a video kind of explaining everything and helping you guys transition from how farming used to be to how it, well, it's going to be now. And a lot of these clips is actually me explaining these new mechanics to my friends. Uh, and I'll kind of jump in every now and then with little bits of information that I may have missed out on or that I can explain better. Uh, this is a real basic guide as well. So this is going to get you like a real good solid understanding, especially for the for any beginners, anyone who's new to farming or anyone just who doesn't know how to farm now with this new update. I'll also make a more advanced tutorial for some of the, the more complicated mechanics, including how to get the giant plants and like a big run in depth on like what all the nutrients and all that is, because that can get quite complicated. But don't worry, this is a, a real beginner's guide. This will be able to get anyone to know what they're doing with this new update. So uh, anyway, let's get into it. Wait, that's for sure. Okay, so I'm going to start explaining the farms for to you. Okay, so for one. The basic farm and the advanced farms are a thing of the past. They are no longer. And so, now what we've got to do is we have to use the Garden Riggy Majiggy. Which is still under your farming tab. Okay. You guys hear that? And then using that Garden Riggy Majiggy, you end up making all these gardened areas. We're essentially the... You know, where your soil is uh, nice and, and ripe for planting. And uh, just to clarify even more, so the, by garden areas, I mean the plots that you make using the rigamajig. On the screen right now, you can see these darker brown areas that look soily. Those are the plots made by the rigamajig. Um, the rigamajig is currently making some now. And yeah, like I said, this one has four uses, and you'll see me make three of them in this little footage here. And when the actual plot is made, there's a few kind of little bumps in the ground, essentially, where the, the ground is ripe to, uh, to put a seed in. There are also a few ones that are made with uh, little bits of stone in or twigs in, and those are literally just to be shoveled away. Those are the wasted ones. Um, but to continue to use the like farming plot, you need to make a hoe, which is under the tools category. Uh, you have a hoe and a garden, uh, and a golden hoe. Ha, a hoe. Yeah, mate, got some hoes. Okay, and so using the garden hoe, you can make these little patches in which you can plant seeds. And what you also want to then go and make, um, because you can plant all your seeds and you can do all that. And that'll start growing their plants. But what you want to know is you essentially want all the information about your plants. And you're going to want to make a gardener hat which is also under the the food tab, somewhat near the... Oh yeah, you will need to scroll a little bit to it to find it. And the garden hat is a little bit complicated. So it looks like this that I've got on my head here. Oh, okay. And you actually right-click on the hat, and it gives you all of this information that you've got on plants. And... Okay, well actually, sorry, when you first put on the gardener's hat, what will happen is you will have no information. Everything will be unknown, but you can go up to plants and research them. So just like what I just did now, and that learns things about the plants. And you'll, slowly you can do that for every single stage that the plant is in, you can research it. Um, also, we are going to leave these rotting plants here just to see what boss turns up. And then we can fight it. Uh, fingers crossed it won't be too much of a hard battle, but I guess we'll see. So to answer that question, yes, there is a boss, and it is the Lord of the Fruit Flies with their kind of mini part as well, which is just the standard fruit flies. Uh, this is your punishment for neglecting the crops. Now, this is kind of getting a little bit more advanced, and so I'll cover all this in another episode. For now, you don't need to worry about this. Long story short, just don't let your plants rot, and you can prevent the boss from spawning. But, like I said, I'll cover this in another episode. But when you make this hat, 
essentially you then have to research everything so research manures research your fertilizers but mainly i reckon the basics will be to just research plants every single stage of growth make sure to research it if you just hover your mouse over the plants while wearing the hat it'll let you know whether or not you can research it and just press research whenever you can that's going to slowly fill out your information tab on all of your plants um so tell me what's the benefit of learning about plants I'm actually just going to interrupt myself here because my explanation wasn't that great. So long story short, you're going to want to research and fill out all of this stuff on plants because it's going to come in really handy in the future. Um, I'll cover all of this in advanced videos, but essentially it's going to be for growing giant plants, uh, dealing with the boss, I believe actually growing the plants faster and having them be more happy. And so these are the reasons you're going to want to fill out those tabs. Like I said, it's just going to be something that comes in uh, in handy later on. But you might as well already start it because you kind of have to go through every single stage. And the earlier you can get onto that, just the easier it will be. Trust me. And so in this next clip, I'm talking about combinations. Because as a result of learning all the information and studying all the stages of a plant, you get to learn about its nutrient cycles. And so plants use a certain type of nutrient and produce another type of nutrient and these are the nutrients into the soil that I mean and so a carrot produces manure and compost and so I'm going to be talking about kind of why it's going to be beneficial to learn this you know pairing a carrot with something that then consumes uh, manure and compost will then be a good match because they'll kind of just benefit off each other if you understand that that is literally what I studied when I did agriculture, horticulture at school. Why did there you we go. do? Yeah, mate. I don't know why you learned that. You could just be playing dumb stuff. I will fully admit, I never really thought about that when it comes to plants, but that probably does make sense. So you're saying that that's like a real mechanic in, in real life. Most definitely, yes. That's, um, that's why some farmers plant like some kinds of plants that are useless other than just putting um, nutrients back into the ground so that they can have a better crop next year. Whoa. I did not know that. What do you know? Germany, Don't Starve literally teaches you things. By researching them, you find out what they need to grow and then apply those exact needs. Then that's when they grow big? Or when do they grow big? Yeah, so essentially... Oh, so there's a whole mechanic which is a plant's happiness. And wearing the hat, you can literally walk up to plants and assess their happiness. And that's when you're... Um, and for, so for one, I think talking to the plants makes it more happy. Um, and of course, whatever its needs are. So if it needs very manure-rich uh, soil, you can literally go and just plant manure into the ground. Right, okay. But yeah, in general, you're going to want to satisfy these needs as much as you can. So, uh, so also, so talk? literally, like the core basics of farming, when you strip it down, is essentially you have to use the rigamajig to make farmable soil. Then you need a hoe to dig each individual, uh, what would we call it, like a, like a plot, I guess. A little area in which, or a little mound that you can put a seed in. Then that seed will eventually grow into a food that you can, well, that you can pick. In general, as long as you put a seed in, it'll eventually turn into a into a fruit or a vegetable of some kind uh, without any other care. Putting care into it just increases that. But the core mechanic of literally, if you just want some fruits or some vegetables, just use ring with jig. Dig a little thing with your hoe and put a seed in and eventually you will get one. Okay, and I think this is still fairly basic seeds. Certain fruit, um, if the fruit is actually very happy, like the plant is very happy, I believe there is a higher chance of them dropping seeds for the particular plant that is growing. For example, corn that is a, a very happy corn plant has a higher chance of actually dropping corn seeds. So right here, I've got in this icebox here, pumpkin seeds. Now, pumpkin seeds will literally just straight up grow a pumpkin. And that's kind of where you're getting... You're stepping into the advanced or a slightly more advanced side of farming where you're choosing the specific crops that you want. 
where just putting down any seed has a random chance of growing whatever plant, including weeds. Meaning that if you're dealing with specific seeds, you can never get a weed, I believe. It'll always produce the pumpkin or the corn or the eggplant. So does the plant drop the seed instead of the fruit when you pick it? Um, no, it will drop it with it. So you will get the fruit and also the seed. Or you will just get the fruit. Probably what I'll discover and then teach later, or yeah, I'll just be teaching this later, is um, essentially giant crops need the right combinations of uh, resources and nutrients in the ground. And by, by giant, I literally mean you can't pick them up and put them in your inventory. You literally have to carry the fruit on your back. It's that big. And when you smash it with that? a hammer, you it then drops like four eggplants into one eggplant. It's, uh, it's a big boy. <laughs> and to do that, you're going to need combinations. So, for example, um, you know, like what we were saying, getting the nutrients in the ground the right thing. So, for example, a plant that needs manure, you know, providing all around it plants that only provide manure and don't consume manure. So the ground is insanely rich in manure. Or if it's compost or whatever nutrient. And that's going to be how you get these giant plants. Essentially figuring out the right combinations. And, of course, to then have the seeds as well. Because, you know, combinations are great, but you don't really want to be shoveling up every single plant that isn't the right one because that's a lot of maintenance. Ideally, you just want to be doing seeds. All right, team, so this has been a pretty basic breakdown of farming. Now, of course, there are more advanced elements to this. For example, the weeds, the giant farm, uh, the giant farms, the giant plants, the giant crops, as well as actually does go into the... It's like a, another type of hat that actually looks into the into the ground. And, and of course, combinations, which is kind of a part of the the giant crops. Now, I'll be covering all of these in future episodes because I think they all should kind of get their own episode. I don't want to baffle this one with all the information so that it's too confusing. Um, and so, yeah, might as well hit that subscribe button so you guys can get stick around for those videos. I'd really appreciate it. And if they are already out, I will have linked them in the description below so you can find them there. Anyway, cheers, team. Um, this has been Sergeant Bingbong. Thanks for watching.